Gece. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. You may wonder why it would be necessary for us to tell you how important it is to protect uh, the access uh, credentials to different systems, something that could be obvious, protecting our confidential information. But even more so, when we think that those credentials access to information that may be critical for our organizations. So let me tell you that there are black markers. I imagine that many of you uh, may already be aware of it, but in those black markets, they sell access credentials, valid credentials. And why are we here for this? Because let me show you a few figures. What do we see here? 574 access credentials to some uh, systems of LACNIC that give you, maybe some of you are these involved here, have your access credentials for sale in these black markets. So we are worried. Yes, we are, because this is just uh, a part of uh, the uh, credentials market that are offered in the black markets. The information comes from uh, what we will see in just uh, a few minutes. Before that, let me tell you that for those of you who don't know it or may not remember it, on January 3rd, 2024, Orange, that is the second uh, largest operator in Spain, suffered an attack because uh, there was uh, uh, a password that had been uh, exploited. And uh, do you know how the attacker did it? it because they had access to a black market block and that password was for sale. What did uh, this gentleman do? He went, uh, he appeared in the RIPE system where they manage the resources and then started uh, uh, touching things. Uh, and uh, and for uh, the, and Orange uh, had a time down for many hours. It goes without saying that uh, that had a severe impact. So I invite you to visit the blog of LACNIC. You have there all the details of that attack. I'm absolutely certain that you're thinking, well, but that happened on the other side of uh, the uh, Atlantic. But uh, you know what? It happened to us too. We had a security breach of an unauthorized access to Milaknik in early January. What happened? In January 2024, we detected 120 successful logins for non-authorized third parties to Milaknik. So what did we do? Right away, we put together a group to manage the incident. We worked jointly with the service area, the IT area, and CSERT to better handle this incident. And and to work in coordination. Alfredo will give you the details in just a few minutes. But what is important and what do I want to show? The I said a while ago that I was going to talk about the info stealers. Those are malwares, malicious uh, software designed to steal uh, our credentials from these systems. And precisely this hacker not just hacked systems, but uh, published everything in X, in uh, the social media. And they told, he told us that he got the password to have the access to RIPE with an info stealer. And the source of the password was an info stealer. So we said, well, so what can we do? But to see what we can do, let's say, of those 574 uh, accounts that uh, have been vulnerated, probably some of us here, let me tell you, 80% of the passwords have weak uh, uh, credentials or very weak credentials. Oh, so that's it. 
I'll go and put the passwords, long, very long passwords, and uh, that's uh, wonderful, and uh, the problems are over. No, I continue to have problems because if you were paying attention, the info stealers are a software that is installed in the computers of people to steal information. And uh, they have a feature that is that it's I uh, touch and leave. They install, they steal the credentials, and they leave. So there's no way I can uh, learn that I had an info stealer in the system. So not only do I have to make my password more robust, but I have to use another authentication uh, factor. And please bear with me if I am too uh, uh, basic for some, but it's never bad to remind people. Authenticating factors may be something that I know, of course, a password, some security questions that we have in some systems, something we have, a token, a YubiKey, a smart card to enter somewhere in addition to um, entering a code, for instance, and anything that is based in a biometry, my, my footprint, my iris. <coughs> And when I combine these factors, depending on the number of factors that I combine, I may have a second authentication factor, or I may have multiple authenticating factors. So in addition to making our keys more robust, I have to use an additional authenticating factor. But before I give the floor to Alfredo, let me briefly tell you of some good practices. These are just a few. We could divide them into good practices for users, we have to work with them, good practices for organizations, because in the organizations we also have to deal with these issues. Do not use the same key in different platforms. Many users say, oh, it's easier. So instead of remembering uh, 10 keys, I'll remember just one. And But when I'm attacked, uh, the lateral attacks occur and then I'm going to use the same platform. Do not share credentials among users. You may think that people that you share credentials with, people share credentials and much more than we would suspect. We ask you not to do it. Uh, handling uh, passwords because there are many systems that we have access to and uh, the passwords need to be made more robust and if we use a password manager life is much easier we can even ask them to set uh, the characteristics of the passwords etc we have to keep the systems updated with the info stealers we also have to think that please do not download pirate software and we are if we are offered to download something that is too good to be true let's not trust let's not do it and if i have to do it i need to know, do it in my own personal device and not the one that i use to access the files in my organization monitor credentials compromise and using robust passwords and implement at least the second authenticate factor. And this is a call for action for all of us, especially if we see the first figures that I'm going to repeat them. 574 credentials for sale in black markets of users that access some system of LACNIC. So I wasn't wrong in this slide, nor did I put it twice. I'm asking you to please make your passwords more robust and implement a second authenticating factor. And now let me give the floor to Alfredo, who will give you further details of the security incident that we had in January. Good morning. As Graciela pointed out, I'm going to start talking about the incident. We had 120 logins, at least 120 that we detected, which is quite a lot, 20 of which were in accounts that manage resources. So we could have had a damage similar to what Orange uh, uh, suffered. Fortunately, these were all minor actions. Now, let me tell you what we found. 
As soon as we detected this, this happened uh, between uh, January 31st and January, uh, December 31st and January the 2nd in our region. That was a very easy time because everybody was thinking of something else. We blocked the accounts and we started contacting the service uh, team in each organization to try to reestablish uh, access. We also started, launched an investigation, as Graciela said. We put together a working group with technology services and CSERD to try to understand what had happened. And we sent a, a communicate to all the members, I'm sure you all received it at the time, to let them know that we were detecting suspicious activities in the accounts and uh, and inviting them to install the second authenticating factor of this investigation what we concluded was there was no uh, brute force uh, attack though they were all uh, clean uh, enters using uh, use of password. No systems of LACNIC were compromised. As a matter of fact, our system does not store the uh, passwords. And we saw that the attack was due to compromise of uh, passwords that were for sale in the black markets. And we could check this with tools that allow us to see the passwords that are vulnerable, as Graciela showed this morning, and also talking with the user, some of whom confirmed that they had had problems with passwords of other sites, including banks, in recent months. And a very important thing is that none of the compromised account had a second uh, authenticating factor enabled. So you may wonder how important is it to activate the second uh, authenticating factor in Milaknik. As I already told you what happened in Orange, there are several factors that may be affected in Milaknik. You can create and uh, change uh, our RPKI, our, our, uh, the uh, um, uh, information on geolocation. You may add or remove uh, sub assignments and also the information, uh, contact information of uh, the uh, members uh, in Melaknik. What is it you can't do? transfers. Why not? Why, why do I say this? Because the people that compromise, vulnerated uh, the accounts, they started transfer processes, but it's quite a robust process. It is full of controls. And, and just uh, because you have the credentials of a user of Milaknik, you won't be able to complete a transfer. Now here, I marked the things they did do. Uh, the arrows are misplaced, but they changed rows of uh, the accounts they entered. There's some universities had problems and they uh, contacted us. They changed uh, some of the members' information. In most cases, what they did was to change uh, the contact email and the password, and in four cases, they tried to make transfers. What are we doing at Melaknik? Ever since, we started to work in an action plan to accompany all those members uh, uh, members to enable their second authenticating factor. The first thing we'll do, or the first, uh, well, it's this activity, but uh, really, the next step is a survey that we'll conduct uh, in Melaknik to try to understand what, now, one out of five users do have not enabled the second authenticating factor. We want to understand why, whether there's a re, something that we can improve in the system for them to use it. If in that survey we don't find any impediments that uh, are justified, we are going to start making this second authenticating factor factor mandatory. We'll start with the big members and then middle-sized and small ones. All this will go hand in hand with uh, an informative campaign and supportive campaign. We won't say from now on it is absolutely mandatory, but we will uh, uh, gradually help uh, the members um, uh, enable those uh, those factors. 
parallel to that, we're working on systemizing alerts when we detect that these passwords are for sale in the black market. Today, we send the information to the members manually or in an ad hoc way. But the idea is that the system should have this through the Milaknik system so that when you receive an alert, Please bear in mind that this is not just the Milaknik password. If you had an InfoStealer in your machines, then it's all your passwords or those that you used over that period of time. So really pay attention to that. Now that we are aware that there are passwords for sale, and the damage that this can produce and that this will become uh, 2FA will be mandatory. Let me tell you how this has been implemented in LACNIC. We focus a lot on the ease of use, uh, the usability. We also included multiple factors that can be used as two-factor authentication and, can all, and they can all be used simultaneously. So this provides a lot of flexibility. One of the options are third-party authenticators such as Google or 1Password, LastPass, and others. And others are the ones used by the majority. Others are SMS. And there's another thing that is important. Those who have enabled this is to download the 10 unique use codes. You can download these, you can store these, if you lose the mobile phone you're using with the authenticator, for example. One of the things we incorporated recently as it is now being used are the Yubi keys, which are hardware keys. And those who are not familiar with these, these are like small pen drives that are connected to the computer. And we use this as a two-factor authentication. You can use this with multiple accounts. You can use them with Milaknik as well as with other accounts that support technologies such as these. And the important thing is to understand that you have four different options that you can use, and you can use the four at the same time. It's not just one or the other. So this can provide the certainty that if you lose your mobile phone, you have other options. I'd like to make two further comments, and I think Graciela won't like this. I'm aware she won't, but we know that there are several users that share a password, and this was one of the limitations that we received regarding why they didn't use the two-factor authentication. This is because they man this account, an account was managed by two different persons in different shifts to manage the resources. So if you share an account, you can still have different devices as a second factor authentication configured with that account. It can be one single user and password and then several mobile devices configured for the two-factor authentication. But in response to the request received, what we did a couple of months ago was the co-admin option at Milaknik. So you might have more than one administrator for one same block. So it might no longer be necessary to share passwords. And now I'll give the floor back to Graciela, who will organize a small activity. This is a survey to collect the information we need to make progress in this process of the mandatory nature of the two-fact authentication. So now, I'd like to ask you for your cooperation. This is totally anonymous, but please help us to measure the temperature in this room as to where we stand. These are three brief questions. We're not going to take up too much of your time. So with that QR code, you can join. And let us go back to the previous question. This is the third question. So, thank you. The first question is, do you use a password manager? I'm going to drop dead now.
<laughs> great emojis. So, shall we stop here and let's go on to the next question. Have you enabled uh, two-factor authentication at Milaknik? So this is quite a stable value. More than 50% of the respondents do not have a second fact authentication enabled at Milaknik. And regarding the 12% of don't know, I assume these are organizations that have resources but are not sure or don't really know if they have this because they're not responsible for that. And in this case, if you haven't enabled a second fact authentication at Milechnik, please indicate the main reason. All right, with these numbers then, Alfredo, would you like to make any comments? But you'll now make an interesting invitation. Before giving the floor to Alfredo, I'd like to ask you the following. Please become apostles in your organizations. So those of you who belong to organizations that have resources assigned by LACNIC and are not those responsible for managing these, you don't have a user and a password, but you know people who do so, please be apostles and take this message to your organizations. It is important to protect our access credentials to all the information and even more when we have the responsibility of managing information assets of the organizations where we work. And who could be better than us who learn that there are info sealers and that robust passwords are not enough because they can protect us from brute force attacks, but not from these bugs. So let us become apostles. Let's take this message. Let's make internet more secure, better, and more stable. Thank you. We're almost at the end. Thank you very much to those who answered this survey. This reinforces the need of organizing activities such as these, as well as the communications campaign that we are now embarking on. And let me take this opportunity to invite those of you who haven't enabled the second fact authentication to please visit the LACNIC booth. The people from registration will be there. Jose, Lorenzo, Julio will be there helping you enable the second factor for those who don't have enabled this. And we have some small presents for those who visit the booth. Regarding this specific activity, we'll be there today from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., and on Thursday from 2 p.m. from 4 p.m., as well as during all the breaks. But we will be at the booth most of the time, but you will have people there who will be helping you to implement this 2FA. And before we finish, we want to 
share with you a video that shows you how to enable 2FA at Milaknik. This is very easy. Let's have the video, please. Milaknik presenta su nuevo. LACNIC presents its two-factor authentication. This is a method that confirms that a user states who they are, combining two components. This service confirms the identity of a user with a password and a second factor, which is different from the previous one. MILACNIS uses digits generated by authority authenticating device. To configure a 2FA at MILACNIC, the user has to have at least one alternative email address. Then, we will ex now we'll explain the three available methods to configure the second factor authentication. Bear in mind that at least one of the three methods has to be configured to enable authentication with two factors. First method, configure with authenticating software. First, download authentication two-factor authentication software through Android or iOS, depending on the device. Once you have the app, scan the QR code from the camera in your app. Once you have the six-digit code, enter the numbering in your MILACNIC section. Ready. Your second factor authentication has been enabled. Second factor confirmation configuration with SMS. To use this method, selection this option, two-factor authentication with SMS through your mobile phone. Then enter your mobile phone, which will receive the single-use code. You have to put plus the country code and your telephone number. Then you enter the six-digit code you received in your mobile phone, and this will confirm the two authentication factor automatically through SMS. Third option, configuration with YubiKey. To use this method, enter the third option, configuration to FA using an authenticating factor, which is YubiKey. Then select, it, select this option and click on Enable Device. Finally, select Submit and Ready. YubiKey has been installed as a second factor authentication. In case you lose your authenticator, use your security code when you lose your device. You have to download the file first and save it in a secure environment. If you lose that file, generate all the security codes once again. Bien, bueno. So, on our behalf, thank you very much. And hopefully, this was useful information. We count on you to authenticate the second factor authentication, and we are available if you have any questions. No, no, so, I'm Simone from Internet Society, Panama chapter. In the slide, you saw that the services that might be affected during attacks such as these could be RPKI, IRR, ADNS, geolocation. So, these are the most critical ones. But have you done any estimation of how catastrophic this can be. We have cases of companies like ransomware from WannaCry or other types of ransomware, the one of the government of Costa Rica, the ones I've learned about recently in Latin America was the one last year for the ISP world of the IFX Colombia, and I think there were some others, one in Peru and one in Chile. So that is in the ISP world, something quite recent, because normally if that were to occur, it is sort of more reserved, but in the enterprise world, it's far more common. So have you estimated the relevance of this, the size to send out the alarm? In the world of enterprises, this is far more constant in the sense of the alarms that are triggered regarding these problems. When you're referring to some kind of uh, determining the relevance or the size, if we analyze this or if we are working to prevent this from happening, I'm not sure I will understand your question. Well, for example, in the world of enterprises, the ransomwares we have heard about, like WannaCry, that was back in 2017, had an impact on many multinational companies, and they were left out of operations for more than one or two days, or the one of the government of Costa Rica two years ago, which really 
left the entire government of Costa Rica with issues for about one full month and they could not operate. Or also, when you go to forums on enterprise security, these are the cases that are mentioned in order to create the benchmark. The sizing, for instance, is five, the 574 accounts compromised that are for sale in Infos dealers. As we said, it happened to Orange, but to us too. Unfortunately, we have robust processes, for instance, for transfers. But uh, still, well, that's a matter of sizing. Imagine if those passwords uh, belong to companies that have many, many IPs assigned. They can uh, crash, clash your um, uh, services. Uh, yes, you have the historic milestones as, uh, as the companies do it. There are many more than uh, those I mentioned, but typically they are used by the security people for companies to create that alarm. Yes, that is why we suggest you should monitor credentials. In a way, organizations need to mo monitor the credentials exposed. Thank you. I'm Ricardo Patara. This is not a question, but just a brief comment. I will say it in Portuguese. The uh, BR registry in Brazil has an administration system, and it has a second uh, authentication uh, um, method. And uh, what you said is valid for all of us. It applies to everybody, even to the uh, providers' communities in Brazil. So I also want to call um, and them uh, to enable the second authenticating factor. Thank you, Ricardo. Sergio Rojas, I speak on a personal basis, and I think that Ricardo sort of answered my question. Now, I, I'd like to know whether this second authentication factor was uh, enabled in uh, the NICBR and NICMX uh, platforms. Well, in the case of NIC Mexico, Edmundo is here. He'll answer. Good morning. I am Edmundo Cáceres, and uh, I'm uh, of uh, NIC Mexico, and we are working uh, to enable our second authenticating factor in our systems. It's something that we had already contemplated for a while, even before what happened at RIPE. However, well, the priorities in the implementation of systems, well, you know how it works. So uh, priorities have changed, and as a matter of fact, fact we plan to uh, release that uh, possibility for that uh, second authentication uh, um, factor in just a few uh, months, uh, weeks in Mexico. Uh, for the services in uh, Melaknik, uh, the uh, Mexican members can enable the second authentication factor. There you can enable it. Seeing that um, as a second authenticating factor, the SMS are not so secure, wouldn't it be better to remove that possibility? I understand that we are far, but I think I agree that everybody should use the second factor, but maybe if we enable that option, it will be more complicated to remove it uh, later on. Well, actually, if you have multiple options, when the time comes, if we want to remove it, it might not be so difficult. But uh, anyway, we understand that it is better than having nothing. I understand your comment that it's it may not be the most secure, but we understand that it's better than nothing. I don't know whether anybody in uh, the technical area would like to expand on that. Carlos? Carlos Martinez of LACNIC. Well, including it or 
taking it out would be easy because as the video explained and as Graciela and Alfredo said, you can configure a number of devices. I consider, I agree with you that SMS is the best, uh, is the worst option, but for some reason, that's what most people choose. So that is very telling. Now, I'm not so sure that it's so insecure, but it's not very reliable. It's not reliable. The international SMS, uh, I don't know whether there are there any mobile operators that would like, I, I, I can debate this for hours, but international SMS is very bad in general. It's very unreliable. Sometimes it gets, sometimes it doesn't. From one, some countries you can send it to some, and you, but you can't answer. It's very unreliable. In my view, this is a poor option, the SMS. Not so much for the security, but because of the low reliability. Let me also clarify that this is a common misunderstanding on the single user codes uh, of the authenticators, of Google and authenticators, different from the uh, factor of SMS that at least you need to be connected to the mobile network. The generations of single codes, the OTPs, do not require connection. They can You can operate offline. There's no need for you to have a mobile coverage. If you are traveling using a roamer, a roamer you can use the Google Authenticator because it works with, like random numbers. You initially it with the seat and the key that's in the QR that you're shown, and then there's a f it, it's a function of time. To the degree extent that you have synchronized your device, that will work even if you don't have any uh, mobile coverage. As to security, the fact is that you can be st uh, the sims are stolen. I understand that it's good to have a d uh, double authentication, but if you can't transfer the resources in the case of Lactic, it wouldn't be so bad. But for banks and uh, other things, if the attack is targeted, you are stolen the sim and they have the SMS. Basically, yes, I said at the beginning, it's the poorest choice, but for some reason, that's what people like. Well, the good thing is that in Milaknik, 80% of the people that have enabled the second authenticator factor uh, use the third party authenticators, most of them. So if in the future we chose to do something with the SMS, it won't be so painful. And if they use the codes, if you use the codes, please don't uh, write them down in a, a piece of paper by your desk. Be careful with those codes, too. You need to protect them. Thank you. Thank you all.